Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla stock. Let's go over what is happening with the stock. Pretty somewhat volatile day today, honestly, for Tesla. And as per usual, I'll give you my thoughts moving forward, uh, what I think is going to happen into what <laughs> could be a very interesting to uh, day tomorrow and Friday, the last two days of the week, because, well, tomorrow is pretty much the market trading up to the RoboTaxi event. We have the RoboTaxi event at nighttime, 7 p.m. PST, 10 p.m. EST. And then Friday, we'll have, of course, the post event trading session we'll have robin hood overnight to see how it's reacting as well and we're in for a pretty interesting next two days let's just say that and as if that wasn't enough we have cpi tomorrow and ppi the day after if i'm not if i'm not mistaken so hold on to your hats is all i'm going to say let's talk about tesla i'll give you my thoughts as usual if you enjoy please don't forget to hit that like button this is not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor and of course my membership section on youtube is live that link is down below in the description of the video where i, I constantly share updates on tesla and sometimes other stocks as well like recently again um i did uh, google i did microsoft which unfortunately broke down um and i did i think another one i can't remember what it was but nonetheless Again, link is down below for just $2.99 a month. You can access to all these thoughts and posts in every single day on Tesla and other stocks or for $5, all that plus NVIDIA. But jumping into a Tesla, closing the day, unfortunately down 1.4%, closing at pretty much at 241, almost exactly per share, which compared to the market is obviously a you know a decent underperformance. Now let's let's talk about this, right? What does this mean moving forward, right? Is this bad? Is this good? It, it's, it, it's not bad bad but it's not great right tesla is uh well okay so it came down to this time today one more time to about uh we'll say it actually entered 239s briefly in the morning right in the morning enter that and then it had a massive massive rally up and then it pretty much went back right underneath this uh bear flag potentially so i'm not gonna lie it's not looking too hot here right there, there is some concern now again the daily it almost to perfection on the linear chart came down and retested this uh, uh bottom channel like almost to perfection. Like you really couldn't have asked for a better retest than this, right? Absolute perfection. I did enter that and I actually exited my shares at 245 and I actually re-entered close to the market close uh, in the 241s again, but this time with cash secured puts because I think it's just a lot safer of a play here. Moving into a pretty volatile and potentially unknown next couple of days. So I think this is just a safer way to where if I'm even wrong on the trade and it does actually finally move down and break down below the channel, I personally expect lower levels to hold, which I'll go over that scenario right now. But regardless, we ended up holding the bottom of the channel. Now, I think that's an issue is the fact that despite us holding the bottom of the channel and getting at least some little bit of a bounce, not super convincing, but some bounce action here, right? Essentially, it was actually a lot better during the day when we were up, uh, you know, 245 to 247s. It looked a lot more promising. Definitely bled out the rest of the day, which was disappointing to see. Um, so despite us holding on the linear chart, the log chart is showing a bit of a different story, right? The logarithmic chart, if you pretty much do the exact same trend line, but on the logarithmic chart, you can see it's actually breaking down. It officially has, a, you know, started breaking down below. This isn't great. Like this is definitely not a good sign, right? So it really just depends on which chart are you looking at. This is the price I was hoping we actually wouldn't close at because it does make this confluence a little bit confusing because again, linear chart, hey, we're still good. Logarithmic chart, not as good anymore, you know? So there's a bit of a massive question mark there, unfortunately, but let's just talk about it, right? Okay, let's just say Tesla does break down. Let's say it does finally crash, well, not, not crash necessarily, but let's just say it breaks down. Like I said, over you know the next few months, I do believe Tesla is going to be pretty bearish, unfortunately. It is what it is, right? I, I do believe Tesla will be bearish because, again, it broke out of this channel without breaking 270. It couldn't set a fresh higher high, and that's not really ideal, right? And it also will start putting into the... Uh, it will also make this weekly candle that you know did close above the multi-year trend line came back retested it came back this week so far retested it with the next two days being pretty important if we do fall below the channel and we do let's say going back into the 230s we will officially close most likely back underneath this multi-year trend line which again like i said i will start viewing this as a massive massive bull trap a fake out a, a fake um a fake breakout and that to me is pretty bearish. And you know, usually when these kind of things happen, it's not uncommon to slingshot in the opposite direction. In this case, unfortunately, it will be to the downside. Again, that's still a lot of ifs. We still need to see how today and tomorrow, or tomorrow and Friday play out, right? There's still obviously a lot of things that can change based on pretty massive factors coming in, CPI, PPI, RoboTaxi events. So we'll see how it ultimately plays out. But if we do break down, let's say on, on, on my chart here, if we do lose pretty much the low of today, really, if we start closing like into the 230s, really, like 239, 230, like if we start going there and we start closing, especially below there, that is going to be really, really bearish, right? But what I expect to happen is I expect us to move back down to about the mid to low 230s. 
And I expect this area down here, that was a massive area of resistance, right? That we never actually truly came back to uh, uh, retest. We never came back to retest this after this breakout. Not one time. We came down like this once. And I expect us to, I honestly expect us to probably move down. Honestly, that, that there is a chance that this happens. If the, this is the scenario that plays out, I do expect us to move back down to this area down here at again around the mid to low 230s, retest that breakout. I do expect currently for that level to hold i don't expect it to go much slower which is pretty much the range i sold my cash secure puts in because i do expect it to hold and worst case scenario i'm buying at a cheaper price while getting paid a pretty pretty nice premium amount to buy shares because the iv right now is very very high because there's just so much potential volatility coming up especially for tesla stock with those events coming up right that i just mentioned over the next two days but if we do break down i do currently as of right now i expect about the 230s uh, mid to low 230s to hold, we could potentially even get a bounce from there. Honestly, even a decent bounce from there. There is a chance that we come down, get a decent bounce from the 230s, and actually make our way back up to about the mid 240s again. Why? Because that would just essentially be a retest of this channel breakdown, right? Similar to how you always get breakdowns when you get a you know when you get a breakout or a breakdown. In this case, a breakdown find support at a major support area, which again I expect the mid to low 230s to be, only to come up, maybe consolidate a little bit and then make its way back up at some point, probably get that retest, depending on when it happens, probably around to the mid 240s, could even be, you know, back to 250s. But all it'll be is just a retest somewhere around this vicinity to ultimately make its way back down, right? That's kind of the idea that I see playing out, assuming we break down, which, you know, seems like it's a very real possibility right here, right now. We'll see, of course, moving into it. Now, let's say we don't, and let's say we do actually, you know, gap up tomorrow off CPI or whatever the case may be. And let's say we actually hold, and let's say we don't break down below the two, 240 and 239, and we don't close below there. Let's say we get the bullish-ish scenario, we'll say. Um, well, that will be pretty simple, right? I pretty much view us moving back up to, ultimately, I, I want to see Tesla move back up to about the uh, low-ish 250s, 252, 253, to retest this red line, at which point there's still a possibility we do something like this as well. And until we start closing once again back above this red line, which again, 252, 253, something like that, only then will I start considering a move back up at the very least into the 260s, if not actually finally breaking that 270 range and making its way back up to 280, which then will be bullish. We can make a move like this and then finally fall back down. You can see the trend is pretty similar. I expect Tesla to fall out of the channel to the south side at some point. But the question is just when. Uh, it's not about if, it's just about when, right? And that when is also really important because again, like I said many, many times, if we, if we do fall out of the channel uh, before breaking 270, I find that mid-term speaking, kind of bearish. The chart will be pretty bearish in my opinion. And I, I generally believe that at the very least, low 200s is in play, like at bare minimum, low 200s is in play. If not, ultimately all the way back down to at the very least, like the 170s, worst case scenario will be a back to the green trend line, which will be all the way back down to 160. That's like the worst case realistic scenario, right? Obviously, if we lose this green trend line, well, hold on to your hats because we're in for a bumpy ride. I don't think I'd be pretty surprised if that happens, but in my opinion, breaking down from here before breaking to 70, the worst case realistic scenario is all the way back down to 160s to the green trend line. But again, that's the worst case realistic scenario. At the very least, I would expect low 200s though, uh, to maybe very high 100s uh, minimum in my, in my opinion, of course. I could be wrong, I could be completely wrong, who knows? But that would be something that I would expect because again, like I said, we would also get a false breakout on the weekly, which would be very, in my opinion, very bearish. Usually these false breakouts slingshot in the opposite direction. So from my experience, at least. So those are the main ways I'm looking at it right now. It really comes down to the next few days and how it plays out. You kind of have an idea now, hopefully of the levels I'm personally looking at. If we break down like pretty much tomorrow, let's say, you know, the level I'm looking at for support, could potentially get a nice decent bounce off of there and make our way higher back up to 240s to maybe even 250s for that retest of the channel or we actually gap up and we actually do move up to about the you know low 250s to this red line maybe even by friday right possible that's definitely a possibility and then we ultimately can reject from there and still fall out of the channel and still play out that bearish scenario or the bullish scenario is breaking above this red line breaking above 270 coming up to about 280 to two maybe even as high as 300 and then falling out of the channel which then will be a bullish fall out of the channel because that will just be a bullish uh correction at which i don't think will go anywhere near as low as i projected for my bearish one personally and i think that'll be you know a, a pretty good opportunity personally so yeah that's just the way i'm looking at it in terms of the indicators on the daily you can see they're still kind of bearish right our side still looking kind of mediocre almost like our size that's self making a bit of a bear flag which i mentioned tesla of course is kind of making a bear flag which i'll go over again i guess if you want me to really quickly uh stochastic straight down uh true true strength indicator straight down and of course the bx trender 
still bearish. So it's the stock still looks weak. Uh, the stock still looks weak, but again, like I said many times, if there's a place to finally find some support, to finally find some life, we're pretty much at it right here, right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's just the way I'm looking at it. The one hour, and you may be wondering like, okay, well, why did you buy here and why did you sell up here? Um, well, I mean, I bought here because again, we were pretty much at the bottom of the trend line for the daily. Pretty simple stuff, really. But the reason I sold at 245 is because, uh, and I like 247, I didn't like time to top or anything. I sold at 245 because, you know, we had this massive rally and then we came back down under. I didn't like the fact that we came back under and we didn't hold 240, uh, 245 to 246. You can see how yesterday's one hour candles, we constantly had, you know, similar first hour massive move up it fall and a massive move up and then you can see for the most of yesterday if not all of yesterday we had issues with these candles constantly rejecting us at this like 245 246 area right constant wicks over and over and over today we finally went above it and we actually closed above it that was really bullish i'd like to see that but i didn't like to see that the second hour candle went back below it and closed below and then the two hours after that you can see same same thing like just constant rejection. I didn't like to see that constant rejection like we saw uh, yesterday. And that's why I personally exited my position. Obviously, it ended up being in hindsight the right move. It could have been the wrong move. I don't know, right? I, you know, nothing is guaranteed. Could have been the wrong move entirely. But, you know, it ended up being the right move. And that the risk here is the fact that we are potentially, you know, breaking down out of this bear flag, right? It, this is a potential bear flag breakdown where you can see we had this massive move down from all the way up here, massive move down. And then we started zigzagging this bear flag. Couldn't even go up for the fifth touch point, really. And then we already broke down. And this is the first time we closed candles below this, right? You can see we did go below today, for instance, but we didn't close below it. We started closing one hour candles below this trend line. So yeah, that's not great. So honestly, you know, we could potentially get a small gap up, maybe back up to like 244, 243, something like that to get a retest of this bear flag breakdown and then make our way south out of the channel, at which point I'll probably take profit on my cash ticket puts. It really just depends on how this move happens. Um, I, I have to, it's hard to say. There's just too many ways that this can play out, unfortunately, because there's just so much volatility and so much unknown factors right now moving into the next two days, CPI, PPI, and RoboTaxi. But you have an idea, hopefully, of what I'm personally looking at the overall picture for Tesla moving forward. So hopefully that helps. Uh, in terms of options flow, uh, kind of all over the place. Honestly, nothing really, nothing really that I liked too much. There was one that I shared with my members. This was uh, either they're just lost already or they're really hoping that Tesla pumps really soon. 1.3 million came in uh, for this week, 250 strike, um, again, expiring this Friday when Tesla was at almost 247. It's at 241. Um, yeah, they're down probably a decent amount already on this. Um, it is what it is. It is what it is. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, yeah, all in all, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for another decent update. But I think the Friday update should be the spicy one because that's post-RoboTaxi. So yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.